Hello again everybody, welcome back to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris. Today we are talking about how to take care of fish, right? Your koi. Um, it's a question I get a lot um, from clients in the past about, you know, how difficult is it to keep fish? I'm not sure if I really want to put fish in my pond, you know, um, how hard is it to keep them alive? I don't want them to die, you know, uh, things like this. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. <clears throat> so absolutely the fish the plants the wildlife around your pond are really all dependent upon the health of the ecosystem in the pond correct so you know the health of the pond the success of the pond ultimately is up to you okay um, everything is going to require some maintenance everything is going to acquire your attention from time to time right you can go out and buy a five hundred thousand dollar lamborghini you still got to maintain it right so no matter what it is um, you always have to be aware of what's going on with the pond and it's ultimately up to you to keep the pond functioning correctly to keep everything happy and healthy all right now i've seen ponds that are not set up properly when it comes to filtration and plumbing and and pumps and stuff like this and honestly they can be a real nightmare to to take care of um, on the flip side if the ponds are set up correctly they have a great filtration system we're turning over a lot of water through the filters maybe have uv lights on it a skimmer all kinds of stuff the pond is going to be much more successful and easier to take care of ultimately okay so should you put fish in your pond <laughs> well I mean it, it's up to you but fish are a huge attraction to a pond people love to come over to your house and you know you have family come over and they want to go out and see the pond they want to feed the fish um, you know it, it's something that can also be very relaxing so the sound of the running water down the waterfalls can be very relaxing but it's also very relaxing to a lot of people that just come home from work at the end of the day and go out by the pond sit in a, sit on a little bench or whatever and just sit and just watch the fish maybe feed the fish a little bit and watch them swim around and it's it's entertaining but it's also very relaxing and you know th there's a lot of good things about keeping fish in your pond um, they also um, can eat mosquito larvas okay so they help to control the mosquito population that could breed like crazy in a pond if you just have a sitting standing body of water <clears throat> okay so again is it difficult to keep fish no all right it's really not but it does require some input on your part okay now what are some things that we need to think about okay um, to keep fish alive in our pond um, number one is water quality all right the pH the ammonia levels the nitrite nitrate levels in the pond are really important and we need to be able to check that you know with a test kit periodically um, to keep and prevent uh, disasters from occurring okay if you're testing your water periodically it may be once a week it may be once every two weeks I mean I have clients that I can I bet you don't even have a test kit okay and for the most part <laughs> once you have a pond pretty much established and everything is you know set and functioning properly you're probably not gonna have much of a crazy problem with anything but things can happen okay so testing your pond occasionally will help you to see that hey you know my ammonia level is starting to climb or my ph is starting to drop a little bit okay um, and you can recognize it and easily correct things before you go out to your pond one day and say oh my gosh half of my fish are dead and the rest of them are all laying on the bottom right so testing your water quality 
is very important and it's very easy okay it's basically a little test kit a lot of test kits have multiple little tests in it and most commonly you're going to get in that little kit your pH your ammonia nitrates and maybe something else um, you know water hardness or or phosphates or something some other little test but the three main important ones are pH ammonia and nitrates and um, it's really easy to test. It takes all of, you know, a couple seconds. You take a little vial with water, right, so much water, and you put five drops of the solution in there, you shake it, and then you look at the color and match it onto a little ch color chart. Um, other tests are actually like little strips that have um, a little um, thing on the bottom where you dunk it in the water and you swirl it around for a sec, you pull it out and you look at match the color of the, the end of the tip to the chart. It's really easy. It's not difficult. It's not expensive. Okay. Just requires that little bit of effort. Okay. So water quality is definitely very important for keeping fish. Now some goldfish, I have seen goldfish like living in the most disgusting ponds. Um, they survive. <laughs> okay. Um, koi are a little more sensitive to water quality. So uh, again, not a big deal, but if you have a decent filtration system on your pond, you're turning over the water. Um, you know, your pond is nice and clean and clear and things are functioning, it's not going to be a problem. You should have good water quality. But always, you know, try to test it periodically and make sure things are good. Because clear, clean water doesn't always mean healthy, safe water, okay? There could be chemical compounds in that water that can kill your fish, okay? All right, so the next thing you need to think about for keeping fish is feeding them, okay? So <clears throat> there are many different kinds of fish foods out there on the market. Um, I did a whole video on, you know, feeding your fish. Um, you might want to check that out. But um, yeah, you should supplement your fish's diet, you know, with some decent food. Um, you know, in the spring and fall, we're feeding more wheat germ-based foods. The summer, we're pushing more proteins. And in the winter, when it's really cold out, we really don't need to feed them at all. Um, feeding your fish should not be a burden or a chore. It should be something fun. It really is. Uh, um, you know, most of my clients, they, they overfeed because they just want to go out and feed the fish all the time. Um, so, you know, um, Definitely, you know, give them a good diet, okay? Don't let them starve, <laughs> all right? If you go a couple days here and there without feeding them, it's okay. But, you know, try to, you know, get on a regular basis and in the morning before you go to work or when you come home at night or both, give them a little bit, okay? But check out my video on feeding the fish. I'll get into a lot of specifics about how much and what kind and when and where and how and all that stuff, okay? Um, Keep in mind, your fish are a huge attraction, right? When people come over to your house, when your family comes over, you have a barbecue outside, um, it's a holidays and people come over, they want to go out and see your pond. They want to go out and see your fish. And feeding fish, you know, feeding your fish can be a, a lot of fun for them and a big attraction. So it should not be a burden. It should be something fun, but it should be something that you should be doing with your fish, okay? Otherwise, they will kind of th get really thin. They'll get really skinny. They won't be as healthy, and eventually they'll wither away and, and die, okay? So keep them fed well. <clears throat> The other thing we need to consider about taking care of your fish um, in your pond is predators. All right, predators can be a big thing. Um, number one is the great blue herons, all right, um, egrets, um, possibly things like otters, all right, um, maybe snakes and frogs taking little baby fish. Um, all kinds of, um, you know, <laughs> different things. Now, raccoons, cats possibly could catch a couple fish, but they're not going to jump in your pond, go swimming around, and actively try to catch and eat all your fish. Um, but it is possible that raccoons and cats, you know, could sit on the side and kind of, you know, 
scoop up a fish if this fish swims by and grab them. Um, not that common. Again, I have another video on you know wildlife around your pond, um, so you can check that one out as well. But I'm just you know trying to give you things to consider here about how to you know keep your fish alive. Now, another um, important aspect is oxygen. Okay, um, usually depending on how many fish you have in the pond okay the more fish the bigger the fish the more the oxygen demand is going to be in that in the pond for them to survive okay um, warm water in the summer holds less dissolved oxygen than cold water does so in the winter um, you know their oxygen demand is less because the metabolism their the fish's metabolism will slow down okay as the water gets colder and colder and they're basically laying on the bottom of the pond their um, systems are not in hundred percent full functioning the metabolism is slow and their intake of oxygen is less however we still have to keep oxygen in the water for them in the winter because if the pond freezes over with ice right there's no aeration if we turn our ponds off there's no aeration there's no oxygen in the water and these big fish um, will be the first ones to die um, so same thing in the summer okay warm water fish are fully active okay their oxygen intake is at its highest point so we need to make sure we have plenty of oxygen in the pond be it a waterfall that's running okay um, an air pump some air stones um, again I have videos on that um, you can check that out um, but we definitely have to make sure we have some sort of aeration in the pond as well um, you know, usually waterfalls, keep a waterfall running through the summer and you, you'll have no problem. Um, otherwise, you know, keep the pond clean, okay? Uh, keeping leaves and debris out of the pond, uh, anything that's rotting, you know, any like if you have plants and flowers in the pond when those leaves are rotting and decaying, you know, pull them out, take them out of the pond, keep it nice and clean as you can. It certainly, you know, helps the whole environment, all right? So, I mean, that's really basically a good foundation of what it takes to keep your pond and your, your fish happy and healthy. It's not difficult to keep fish, it's actually pretty easy. Again, if your pond is set up correctly and all your filters and pumps and mechanicals, you know, are working properly, your fish should be fine. Um, just keep your water uh, quality, you know, tested once in a while, make sure everything is, is good within the parameters that are safe for the fish if it's not it really should be pretty easy to correct and you know enjoy it you know a, a pond really should be something you enjoy and not a burden so adding fish to the pond really should add the attraction to it so I hope uh, I hope this video helped you out a little bit just give you some things to think about if you're you know kind of up in the air whether or not you actually want to put fish in your pond or maybe you just want flowers and plants um, but it is good to have at least a couple small fish again you know just to eat mosquito larvas um, and you know goldfish are, are great just also observe your fish okay see the way they react every day how much food they're eating right how they swim around and if you ever go out to your pond and you see that that same typical behavior is not occurring then maybe something is wrong with that water quality okay so that might be you know first indication that there may be something wrong or something sick also visually right inspect your fish look at your fish do you see red sores open wounds on them do they have white spots all over them do they have um, furry cottony fungus growing on them okay um, those can be signs of a disease uh, you know that could occur in the pond um, again <laughs> it's not that common okay if you have I mean it is but it's not if you have a healthy environment for your pond the chances that you're going to come down with you know all these bacterial infections and funguses and stuff um, are less is less and less okay I'm not saying it'll never happen um, but 
chances are in a nice, clean, well-filtered, functioning pond, um, you should be much safer than than having you know a dirty pond where the pumps aren't you know running properly and there's all kinds of debris rotting in it and stuff like that right so um, okay so that's about it um, just uh, keep those things in mind if you're debating whether or not you know to put fish in your pond and you're not sure of how much work it is and how difficult it is to take care of them um, it really shouldn't be it really should be something that you enjoy um, and having the fish in the pond um, you know is is it's exciting it, it gives life to the pond right it, it makes it a lot more interesting so thanks for uh, checking out the video please hit the like button if it helped you out and you know subscribe to my channel if you uh, enjoy you know koi ponds and waterfalls and all that and you'd like to learn a lot more and check out a bunch of my other videos I would really appreciate it um, thanks again for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon take care have a great day bye